Okay, we begin the discussion on module 2 of the non-classical MOSFETs and in this module we talk of silicon on insulator SOI MOSFETs. Last time when we discussed we said or we have seen that the drain current depends upon the injection velocity and that injection velocity depends upon thermal velocity which is 10 to the power of 7 centimeter per second and the product of mobility and the electric field at y equal to 0 that is here at the point of injection what is the mobility what is the electric field that is low field. So, we talk of low field mobility that means mobility near the source end where the electric field is low that is the one which controls the injection velocity. You will never get the saturation velocity of 10 to the power of 7 centimeter per second, but it will be less than that how much it is low depends upon the mobility. So, what we said is if you want to get better performance you need to have higher mobility at low electric fields that is at the source end because everything de because everything depends upon how much is the mobility when it is injected. Okay. These are very important particularly when you go to short channel devices because you are trying to get as close as possible to the saturation velocity or the uh, thermal velocity. So, if you want the mobility to be high what we have shown last time is that the doping concentration in the channel should not be high number one. The other factor which affects the mobility of electrons or carriers in the channel is the electric field in a particular direction or normal direction in a direction normal to the electric to the uh, channel that is that E x which I have marked x is in that direction that depends upon what is the oxide thickness and also how much is the doping here is. If the more are the doping more charges in the depletion layer comes up. So, the electric field in that direction will be higher. So, you can see that to reduce that vertical electric field you need to go to lower mobility. So, both these point to the fact that you need to reduce the mobility of dopants or mobility of you need to reduce the doping concentration as much as possible ideally you can go to undoped. Such things are not possible with the classical MOSFET. You have to go to some special type of devices like the SOI MOSFET that is the idea. And also of course, supply voltage you must keep low to minimize power dissipation. Okay. Then you need to when you go to lower supply voltages you have to have lower threshold voltage and to effectively turn off the device when the gate voltage is 0, okay, when the drain voltage is present you must have excellent sub threshold slope. In the sense 60 millivolts per decade is important when you want to go for lower supply voltages. So, that if you have 0.3 volts as the threshold voltage by the time you reduce the gate voltage 0 the current will fall down by 5 decades 300 by 60. So, that is the idea of that. So, most important thing is to have this do mobility as high as possible by keeping the doping concentration as low as possible and for getting this sub threshold slope 60 millivolts per decade just close to it is very it, it is impossible mostly in the uh, bulk MOSFET. So, you have to go to this non classical MOSFETs or what are these high performance non classical MOSFETs then? One is the SOI MOSFET which you will take up in module 2. There you change the structure so that you can control the doping concentration and reduce it and you can have multiple gates. So, that the gate has tremendous control over the channel as compared to the drain. See the sub threshold slope and all gets affected short channel effects come into picture more and more because the drain takes control of this barrier at the source end. Now, 
if you have uh, wrapped around a, a gate which is all around the channel, then the gate has excellent control on the uh, channel. So, that is what in high frequency high performance nanoscale MOSFETs, you when you choose you will see as you go on to the SOI MOSFET, you can ensure that you get the sub threshold slope which is 60 millivolts per decade. The other approach that you use for this high performance devices is basically change the material from silicon to germanium where you can get high mobilities. Both electron mobility and hole mobilities can be higher than silicon only the material like germanium. You can get close to 4000 centimeters square per volt second for electrons mobility whole mobility something like about 3000 okay, as compared to 450 in silicon. Or you can go to materials like gallium arsenide where only the electron mobility is high, but the whole mobility is not high that all we will take up. So, germanium MOSFETs also we will discuss in the as a new material lot of research work is going on on that. Everywhere you will see that you have problem of the interface states killing the performance of the device. The another non classical type of device is the source and drain of the MOSFETs are metal semiconductor contacts that is the short key barrier contacts as compared to the p n junction. Why we should do that? We will see the main reason to do that is to reduce the series resistance, resistance of the source region. And of course, one more, one more thing that I pointed out uh, last time was you can have the channels which uh, are strained so that you can control the mobility or increase the mobility by either increasing or reducing the uh, strain depending upon whether it is p channel or n channel. Ultimately, of course, you can go to gallium arsenide based FETs, then there is one class of hetero junction devices called high electron mobility transistors, because you can get very high mobilities, particularly when you go to low temperatures. This is uh, the usual bulk MOSFET structure in a very simplified way. There are slight variations in all the things you have got the junction p n junction p n junction and the gate 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 polysilicon gate. Today, people talk of metal gate also. This is the cross section of the silicon wafer bulk 100 oriented. This is where the device cross section. Now, if you recall the discussion on the short channel devices, you not only reduce the dimensions in the lateral direction, keep on shrinking in that direction, you also shrink in that direction vertically. Because only when you shrink vertically, you can get shrinking in the lateral direction possible. For example, in this junction, if I make this junction depth 10 microns, let us say, there will be lateral diffusion. So, this junction will move into the channel at least 7 to 8 microns. So, it becomes very difficult to control the channel length, reduce it to 1 micron, half a micron, 0.1 micron. So, you need to keep the junction depth very, very shallow. So, when you keep the junction depth very, very shallow, you encounter with some other problems. Like when you put a metal here on the top, if you have a metal there, if it is aluminum particularly, you run into problem because that can, if the junction is very shallow, it can spike through this junction, it can short because there is P type material on substrate. Of course, you today you change the material to some silicides, then that problem is reduced drastically. Main thing is lateral diffusion is the one which uh, you want to control, you want to keep the junction of shallow. So, now instead of taking this conventional bulk MOSFET, you go take make use of a SOI wafer. You have the silicon at the bottom, you have the red color that is SiO2, then you have the silicon layer top. So, notice in the case of bulk MOSFET, strictly you are using only this portion only top portion only the dotted line that I put below that it is of no use. So, 
the SOI is nothing but the top layer cut there and realized on this side on this layer. So, if you go to this device there on the right hand side we can see it is nothing but the same thing cut and put here. It is not the way it is done. So, you start with the wafer which is silicon on the insulator. There are different ways of making these devices. So, if I have this is called box buried oxide. Okay. It looks as if you have buried the oxide below the surface. It may not be buried really, but in some cases when you make the SOI you actually bury the oxide. We will see how to do that. <coughs> okay. So, SOI layer this you use. Now, once you have this thing how much is the layer the junction depth here? There is a junction here because it diffuses all through there is no p type layer the silicon is setting on the oxide. So, when you put a metal there even if the metal spikes and goes through there is no short circuit because there is oxide below. So, you can use aluminum itself very comfortably here. Okay. So, you can see how much is this uh, junction area see in this case the junction area is vertical horizontal vertical the horizontal portion may be at least few micron you must keep it wide enough. So, that the metal that you put here that may be taking 5 microns let us say then this must take at least 10 microns. So, that extra junction is present in that portion whereas, here the junction is only here vertical that may be 0.1 microns 0.2 microns very small junction area. What is the junction area? The depth multiplied by the width it goes perpendicular to that area plane of paper it goes like that depth. Okay. So, depth is perpendicular this plane here. So, w into this stage silicon that is the junction area whereas, in the previous case it is w into the total area there this may be large 10 microns or 5 microns, but this will be only about less than a micron you will see it is even goes to nano today. When you talk of nano devices you talk of the layers which are of nano dimensions 10, mi 10 nanometers 20 nanometers of that order you will see the benefits of that uh, as we go on. So, junction area is small here and you are not worried about reducing the thickness of the layer you are not worried about spiking or metal sorting. Okay. So, shallow junction formation and metal spiking and sorting in the junction of what is available here will not be there and since the junction depth is very very shallow here lateral encroachment of the junction into the channel is minimized. So, when you want to make smaller devices this works out beneficial. Okay. Now, let us just take a look at what are the different types of SOI wafers which are present. Classically or historically the SOI was not SOI SOS not save our soul it is silicon on sapphire. Okay. This is sapphire single crystal sapphire L 2 3 you can crystal grown you can buy it very expensive much more costly than silicon okay. several times costly. On that you grow 100 oriented silicon epitaxially you can have this 0 0.1 microns or of that order. Use this particular layer for making the device. Now, you see the entire layer below that is insulator fantastic if you can get that. You can get that people use this even today for some of the very sophisticated uh, radiation hardened type of devices for defense applications they use this. Okay. But the very expensive you get 4 inch wafers not big I do not think there are larger dimensions are there bigger than 4 inch because of difficulty in growing the tail 2 3 that is a high temperature process. But there is some issue here the channel mobility here is not very high because the quality of this layer when you make it thin is not as good because this is does not match very well with the substrate that is match is not so good. 
So, the quality is not good, so good, but if you are not looking at the high mobility, if you are looking at other performance like radi radiation hardening and also if you are looking into the the you know the routing capacitance. For example, when you connect one device to the another device on the surface of the oxide, if this insulating layer is very thick, the capacitance of this routing capacitance with respect to substrate is very very small. So, you know those parasitic capacitance are very small in this case. And also when you make a device like uh, that, when you make a device like that, the junction capacitance also is small because junction area is small. Okay. So, here you just make the device there, you get junction area small, capacitance small, stay capacitance small. That way you get much better performance. Ultimately, in the integrated circuits you know that the culprit is the stay cap parasitic capacitance. So, you want to reduce that, you can do that with this. So, most of the different applications they use that. There is, this is start with single crystal. See, it is a hexagonal structure that is why 0, 1, 1, 2 is the orientation. That particular orientation only, there is fairly good lattice match between, between silicon and sapphire. But, if you want a cheaper uh, way of doing this, you go to uh, go to this type of structure, where the silicon is on oxide, you can choose it 1 micron, whatever thickness you like, not too thick. So, the, instead of taking the whole thing as sapphire, you have got SA go to there. This also will reduce the stray capacitance because of the cocktail below. That parasitic capacitance will be reduced. <coughs> okay. So, how do they do that? This is a very popular way which by which the SOI layers are made in IBM. In their mainstream integrated circuits, they use the SOI layers which are called Cymox layers. Cymox is separation by implanted oxygen. Here actually you are really burying that oxide. Okay. How do you do that? Take a silicon wafer, the full thing is silicon there, cross section, implant oxygen atom, implant the atoms itself. Okay. Implant, in fact when it comes, it comes at as, as ion but it gets neutralized. After implantation, it is neutral. So, implant it at energies like 100 to 200 kilo electron volt, so that the, the oxygen atom gets inside the layer and it is implanted into the bulk of silicon. The dark region which I have shown here is actually the region into which you have implanted. Actually, what happens is when you implant it, depending upon energy, the depth at which it is implanted is decided. Maybe half a micron, 0 0.1 micron, that depends how much lower energy will be implanted close to the thing, close to the surface. Now, I put a band of region because when you implant the impurities or any material, it is not going to stay in one place. It goes through a surface most of them land at one particular depth, but there is a spread because after all where it lands depends upon the number of collisions it experiences. In the sense, it comes with let us say 100 keV energy, it collides with one atom, the host atom, it is like a billiards ball. Okay. So, it collides with that, gets scattered, the lattice atom of the host atom also moves. You know, in the billiards when you play, that moves, this also gets reflected. So, in one, co one collision, it loses some energy. After undergoing several collisions, it comes to rest. Okay. So, how far it goes to rest depends upon what was the energy, how much energy it loses in each collision and how much it loses also depend upon the host atom and whether it hits a down collision or at a slight angle. Okay. So, if it is head-on collision, then maximum energy will be lost in one collision. If it is at an angle, cos theta of that energy will be lost. It is actually proportional to the product of the two masses. Heavier masses will lose energy faster. 
it will be difficult to implant deeper. So, this oxygen atom you will see it as a spread because depending upon the angle and the number of collision experiences, it is a statistical phenomena instead of landing at one place there, here it will be around that region that is why that depth band is put there. So, when you implanted it was just oxygen atom. Okay. Now, raise it to high temperature like 1300 degree centigrade, silicon does not melt at that temperature because melting point is 1410 degree centigrade. So, that I change the color here because it has become a SO2. Okay. Silicon dioxide because of that oxygen reacted with silicon. So, what happens is when the reaction takes place there will be swelling, the volume will increase. You know that if you just uh, look at number of atoms per centimeter cubed of silicon is 5 into 10 to the power of 22 per centimeter cube. So, I just put some numbers here just we will come back to this slide. So, if I have 1 micron oxide formed there, okay, it has the, if the thickness of this is 1 micron I am giving an example, the thickness of silicon is 0 0.44 micron even in thermal oxide here also 0.44 whatever atoms which are there in 0.44 micron would have reacted with oxygen okay. in 0.44 micron there will be number some number of atoms will be there into 2.27 number of oxygen atoms will react with that uh, into 2.2 into 2 whatever number of atoms is there into 2 for 1 silicon atom 2 oxygen atoms. So, twice the number of oxygen atoms will react with that to get this thickness, but the volume or the thickness will be 2.27 times. So, what I have just put here is to make it clear number of atoms in silicon okay, uh, 1 micron silicon dioxide is 5 into 10 to the power 22 into 10 to the power minus this is number per centimeter cube silicon atoms into 10 to the power minus 4 is in 1 micron though so many silicon atoms are there. Okay. So, in in 0.44 micron silicon dioxide silicon that will be number of atoms present. Okay. Number of oxygen atoms in 1 micron will be that into 2. See so many number of silicon atoms will react with twice the number of oxygen atoms. So, that is number of oxygen atoms. So, what you have said is in 0.44 micron thickness of silicon how many silicon atoms are there. Now, twice the number of oxygen atoms will react with that to give you the SiO2 which is 1 micron that is the idea. Because whatever was 0.44 into 2.27 is the thickness because it expands. Okay. So, the in 1 micron there is a thing if I take 0.4 micron oxide if I want that will be 4 times that the about 1.8 to 10 to the power of 18 oxygen atoms per centimeter cube centimeter square. I put that number because I have written here implant 1.8 into 10 to the power of 18 centimeter square of oxygen atoms to get about 0.4 micron that is 400 nanometers that working out I gave here. Okay. So, what we are telling is you put that number of atoms you will get 0.4 nanometers of uh, 0.4 microns thickness of buried oxide. Okay. So, this involves uh, high temperature process this is what uh, IBM uses for realizing SI wafers which are called SIMOX. Typically how much is the buried oxide is controlled by how much thickness is there controlled by what is the implantation dose. Okay. So, that is the uh, because it consumes so much of silicon atoms usually it is 100 to 400 mic, uh, nanometers is the thickness. Okay. This annealing is done for very long time because after all you have implanted the oxygen and the reaction takes place there this is the technology. So, you can see you require a lot of uh, the implantation system etcetera for this and industries do that, but if I want to do it in our lab in the university level where you do not have implantation which will cost you several crores a lot of space will take we use the simpler methods 
that is Besoy, Bond and H bag. This is very simple. The cymox implant anneal, you get the oxide layer buried. Here, thermally oxidized silicon, you want 1 micron, grow 1 micron, 0 0.1 micron, grow 0 0.1 micron. Take another silicon wafer, put them together, it will bond, provided you allow it to bond. In the sense, what you do is this wafer is there, another wafer is there, both of them you must make hydrophilic. You give a chemical treatment. In fact, when you use uh, some chemicals like uh, ammonium hydroxide, ammonia, H2O2, etcetera, for cleaning up, automatically there is hydrogen. Okay. So, HCl and hydrogen peroxide you use for cleaning up the paper. Then, DI water cleaning, automatically there are OH ions. So, it is when you put them together, it is bonding between the OH and OH from the two atoms, two layers. You call it as Van der Waal force, a weak binding. So, put them together, press it, you can heat it to 400 degree centigrade, fairly good bonding takes place. Take it to high temperature like 1100 degree centigrade, couple of uh, hours. It has OH OH bonding, when heat it at high temperature, hydrogen comes out, you get silicon oxygen silicon bonding. So, it is completely SA boot. So, this bonding takes place, you have got a single wafer now which has oxide in between. So, you got virtually buried with the oxide. But now, this is 300 micron, 300 micron. How do you get SOI? Etch that layer to reduce the thickness. You can just keep on etching it chemically, uh, wet chemical or dry etching you can use. How much thickness you get depends upon the etch duration. There are different ways of controlling the thickness. You can get this exact thickness. So, this is the process, press the two hydrophilic wafers. What is hydrophilic? Hydro, it is not hydrophobic, water heating and water loving. So, OH ions are there, then afterwards anneal, then etch it. This is called bond and etch back, besoy. In fact, this type of bonding we can do in the lab level where if there is very clean class 100 or even better clean rooms are there, you can do the bonding. Okay. This type of wafers are very popular in MEMS because you have this thin layer here, you remove the silicon from the bottom here, you get a membrane. You just touch out somewhere in between the center from all the way, you have got the oxide and then this silicon which is a membrane. And I will not go into that, this is in the MEMS course that we talk of. Other method is smart cut. See, here there is one issue. See, for making one SOI wafer, you have used two wafers, okay? polished wafers, so two wafers and at the end of the process, you have other wafer you have just dissolved, it is a waste. So, in order to overcome that and also precisely get this thickness, here the precise thickness is controlled by timing of the etching, which may go off a little bit if you want to. If you want 20 micron thick layer, 0.5 micron difference in the 20, you may not worry much. If you want 1 micron thickness here, that becomes very crucial. So, in those cases and also if you want to use only one wafer per SOI, <coughs> what you do is use smart cut method. This is patent of some company. So, what you do is take this is the dark is coming afterwards. Take a silicon wafer, oxidize it to get the buried oxide, oxidize it, implant hydrogen through the oxide. How much deep the hydrogen goes depends upon the energy of the hydrogen. It is about 1 kilo volt energy in an implanter. If you use, it will go about 8 nanometers below the surface. Okay that is 80 angstroms. I use 10 kilo electron volts, it will be 800 angstroms, 80 nanometers. So, what deep 
you have got this hydrogen below the surface depends upon energy that is under your control. So, remember I can get this even as low as 0 0.1 microns or even as low as uh, 80 nanometers very easily. So, once you do that you take another vapor and bond on the top on the top of that you bond it. So, that bond this is the B is called the handle wafer. Okay. See for example, here when I get the SOI, this is the handle wafer. This is not doing any job, it is only the mechanical support for holding this SOI layer. So, that portion will be the handle wafer which comes below. So, once you do that, what happens is when you have hydrogen implanted, it, uh, it uh, results in cavities. That is hydrogen makes cavities in silicon in this layer. You put heavy dose of about 10 to the power 16 per centimeter square, you will get weak link between the this portion and this portion the cavity. Okay. So, hydrogen is included there in the silicon that is why it makes cavities. Now, when you bond it and anneal it even at low temperatures, this splits up because of the weak link there it just comes apart. It is like putting a hat and taking it out. Okay. So, that comes out like this. So, what has happened now? This layer thickness is this thick thickness and that thickness is controlled by how much energy you had hydrogen atoms. So, you can precisely control the thickness here, you can precisely control this thickness. So, you put it upside down, you have got the SOI layer on top, you, know, you have the wafer like that you put it like that you get the you put it like that you get the SOI layer okay reverse it so now you can see this layer thickness of 300 microns out of that let us say half a micron is gone onto this so still you have got 299.5 microns of silicon which is separated so once this is separated out you have got the silicon on the insulator already you have to put it upside down of course and this wafer which was there it is available for you for reusing. All that you have to do is you may have to slightly polish it. Okay. Polish it, reuse it, start all over again, oxidize and go through the thing. So, in effect what has happened is you have used two wafers to start with, but one wafer is available for you for reuse. Ultimately, only one wafer is used, one advantage. Other advantage is the thickness is precisely controlled by the implantation energy. So, this is very popular commercially available. <coughs> so, you can buy Cymox wafer, you can buy smart cut. Okay. The only thing that you will be concerned with if I want for MEMS application, I may need a thick membrane, say 20 micron etcetera, that you may not be able to get, because you will not be able to have energies of that high to implant it deep below 25 microns. So, in that case what you do is take this wafer which is 0.5 microns grow epitaxially 10 microns of silicon, then you will get 10 microns of SOI layer. So, if you want 10 micron of smart cut test wafer, you can buy it, but if you want thicker ones, the better way to go is this one, because you do not worry about slight change in the thickness, but waste one wafer, you have to use two wafers to get one. Okay. So, now let us see the benefits of uh, two sort of technologies. Some other technologies also have come, but these are the most popular techniques. Now, already I have mentioned to you some advantages of the bulk silicon MOSFET and the SOI MOSFET. Clearly, the drain and source junction capacitances are small here, because junction area only this much into into the w channel width and here that plus all this thing it will be an order of magnitude the area of the junction will be large compared to that because this will be sub micron this will be several microns because it has to accommodate also the metal contact there you cannot have this nano here this will be the one which will be occupying so, the junction capacitance is small, 
straight away one stray capacitance is reduced to the routing capacitance from one device to other device because of the buried oxide below is also reduced plus the junction leakage current. Junction leakage current depends upon the area of the junction in the SOI layer the junction area is smaller. So, leakage current is smaller. So, if the leakage currents are smaller even at room temperature you will be able to use this for high temperatures. Okay. So, the bulk MOSFET when you can use for 100 degree centigrade probably bulk devices here you can go to 200 degree centigrade fairly comfortably. So, higher temperatures if you want to use SOI MOSFET is the way to go. Okay. Also, you can use it in radiation environment because the problem in the radiation environment is when the high energy particles like the gamma radiation etcetera comes into impinges here it generates whole electron pairs in the silicon. When the whole electron pairs are generated here in the depletion layer below this point it is collected it gives rise to the drain current large drain current plus it will also if you have a CMOS structure it will also lead to latch up problem okay, that we will see what it is. Because of coupling between the C uh, P channel and N channel MOSFET you will have the problem you will not have the problem. So, this type of devices can be used for high temperature and operation in harsh environment like the radiation environment. Okay. Capacitance is low. Other benefits this is actually to show whatever I have said here you can see this is a junction capacitance which depends upon doping and this is the junction capacitance which depends upon the buried oxide which is very thick. So, capacitance will be small. In fact, there is no junction here it is a capacitance of this layer and this substrate and this area can be small here and the junction is only here I am sorry it is only the buried oxide we are showing it is easy to see here it is only buried oxide this capacitance from here to down between this and this. This is reiterating whatever I have said before and also here we can have capacitance between this and that below the field oxide field implant additional capacitances. See here what we have shown is that the full layer is there you can etch this silicon to have the MOSFET completely isolated from other MOSFETs. If you go back into whatever you had discussion in the case of MOSFET integrated circuits below that between the two transistors you have that P plus implantation to prevent it from inverting. Okay. Here you have got a thick oxide very thick oxide there below that and if you want any implantation you put it down there. Okay, but you do not need that because complete isolation is there there is no silicon. Okay, now, what you can do will be one my question there is a step here from one device to other device, but you want to have planar structure why do you want planar structure lithography becomes difficult if the, there are steps big steps. So, what you do is suppose I want to etch silicon from here if I do not have the red it is a step. Now, instead of that what I do is I etch the silicon from here supposing this is 1 micron silicon just as an example a soil layer is 1 micron I etch it leaving 0.44 micron okay. and this is nitride deposited on the top. So, that while etching it can protect So, H SOI layer partially leaving 0.44 micron of SOI layer unetched as shown here. Now, oxidize it. See, if I did not have this nitride low pressure CBD it is a technique by which you deposit by the reaction of silane and ammonia you can get silicon nitride. <coughs> okay. That nitride is tough one. <coughs> tough in the sense if you put it in, a, in an oxidizing ambient it oxidizes very very slowly. For example, 
if I have nitride here and a step here and I subject it to oxidation on this surface, this layer will get oxidized. The oxidation rate depends upon the temperature. Okay. So, when this oxidizes, this portion hardly gets oxidized because nitride is there. Nitride, <coughs> the oxidation rate of nitride, silicon nitride, Si 3 and 4 is about 30 times smaller than that of, that of silicon. So, even by the time if I grow 0.1 micron of oxide, nitride will oxidize 1 by 30th of 0.1 micron, hardly any oxide is there. So, nitride is intact, silicon is not getting oxidized, it is protecting it from oxide. So, that means what you are doing is you are oxidizing locally here, that is called local oxidation of silicon or low cost. At the same time when we were discussing in the field oxide, you see the local oxidation. <coughs> okay, it may ent get inside slightly here, but ideally it will be the shape. So, now if I had used 1 micron silicon and 0.44 micron silicon was left by etching, I oxidize it. This silicon after oxidation expands 2.27 times and this thickness becomes equal to 1 micron. So, 0.44 micron of silicon when you oxidize, thickness becomes 1 micron. So, you can see that oxide thickness here is 1 micron and this is in flash with this. You can ship off that nitride afterwards. Orthophosphoric acid or dry etching, you can remove this nitride. So, you can have the plane parallel structure, silicon isolated from each other with oxide all around. You can see that the silicon layer is isolated from the bottom silicon layer like that and each island is isolated by oxide in between and there is no step. All these advantages are there. Okay. So, that is what I have shown here. I want to make CMOS. How do you make? You can uh, first create this island, one island, another island. That may be very lightly doped P type all over. So, what you do here is protect this side completely, you can implant the source strain regions, always you implant and then annihilate. I am not going through those steps. Okay. You can create make this transistor by protecting the other side implanting source strain region. Now, you can protect this side with photo resist, you can use photo resist as mask for implantation, that is a nice thing about that. Through lithography, leave the photo resist from some portion implant wherever photo is not there. Implant it. See, if I want to have a, if I have a P type layer here completely, I can implant onto this N type dopants, make this entire layer an N channel, N type material. So, instead of making P well, N well, etcetera, you make this P type and N type. P type originally, make it N type. Then the usual procedure to make the source drain regions here, source drain regions here. Those steps are same. I am not going through uh, go through that, this is polysilicon, this is polysilicon. So, this is the structure of CMOS schematic. What about the, the bulk MOSFET? This is schematic, simple version. If we do not do anything exotic, what we will have will be this is the N channel MOSFET, okay. That is the source, drain of the N channel MOSFET and the source is connected to a guard ring to ground it. Okay. So, because after all you see substrate is connected to the source in the MOSFET, that is always there. So, you, in you make a MOSFET, if you see member, you always connect the substrate to the source, so that the bipolar action of that comes out of action. So, you have this connected to the ground that is the N channel MOSFET and to create the P channel, P -channel MOSFET you have to implant N type regions N well and here also you make this N plus to terminate it so that you can make ohmic contact connect these two together. Substrate connected to the source, substrate connected to the source. So, this are this is the usual structure there may be variations of this arrangement. Now, you can see what happens here. 
I do not know whether you are aware of the thyristor action P n P n structure. You can see here you got P n P n this is a thyristor. Wherever you get that type of structure the thyristor characteristic is it is off usually, but due to some Fourier pick up somewhere let us say this injects holes into that. Supposing this drain voltage from spike there may be voltage spikes coming up or some noise pick up this voltage goes up this gets forward by more this injects holes okay, and this P and P transistor that is P n and P that is what I have marked here this P n P transistor injects electrons into the emitter to the base collector and collector is driving the base of the N p n transistor this is the N p n ok N p n. So, this P n p transistor drives the base of the N p n transistor if there is Fourier pick up even if there is a radiation that can generate whole electron pairs and that can give forward by this. So, there will be injection. So, if it, if it drives the base of this transistor what happens? N p n transistor you drive the base this turns on. So, this emitter current increases that drives the base of the P n p transistor. So, it is a positive feedback situation P n p somehow to got triggered base driven other base drive. So, goes on building up and current goes on building up till the external current is limited by till the current is limited by external resistance either that or device will get damaged if there is no limiting factor. In logic circuit there will be malfunctioning of the logic uh, state. Okay. So, you want to prepare how to prevent that? Prevent this base collector driving the base of this transistor there may be spurious response here prevent it from driving this base of the transistor. How to do that? Isolate this by putting shallow trenches. Okay. You can remove this portion completely put a trench there put oxide I do not know whether I have the diagram here yeah you can see here. So, you have to put trenches in between here you see already the by the way you made the soil very thin layer is there you can local oxidation you can do you can isolate them physically isolated electrically isolated completely from each other. So, you do not have to worry about the latch up problem this is called latch up because once it is a driven positive it went on building up it gets it remains thyristor gets turned on it remains in on state. How can you turn it off? Either you have to remove the supply you cannot do it in integrated circuit you cannot turn off or you must have commutating circuits where the force the current in opposite direction to bring it on all that you can do in uh, power electronics probably, but here you cannot do it in, in the IC. So, you must prevent that latch up phenomena which is uh, generic problem in the bulk CMOS it is not there here. So, in the bulk CMOS you know you do this type of thing you can see that you see how complicated the structure is you have got lightly doped regions you have got these regions all these things and in between you have got a trench created it is not enough if you create trench you have to again fill up that with oxide ok this is shallow trench but it has to go deep enough so that it covers all these portions. So, what they do is trench you create fill up the oxide then you have to make it plain parallel by lapping and polishing. In fact, uh, intel does not go for a soy that is what they say they believe in shrinking the dimensions in the bulk MOSFET, but the process is so complicated that you to get the planar structure you have to lap it lap it means that abrasive reduce the thickness by force holding like that ok rubbing it. So, yield may go down in that in fact, uh, when uh, we were talking to some of the people of intel they say yeah that affects our yield ok. So, but still I think everywhere they try to see how far SOI can be used. So, these problems are not there in the SOI and this is another version of that I just show this is more simplified way more different way this why like this n channel p channel metal contact metal contact oxide everywhere ok. Redrawn in a different way that if there is thick layer you can go like that, but 
you you can have them ten hour lecture almost like that. Okay, if it is very thin layer, usually you will see that you will go to very thin layers in integrated circuits. Okay, now <coughs> in summary of these things about the SOI, we have seen the technology of that, how to make them. We have also seen what are the benefits. Benefits are low parasitic capacitance, drain source junctions and interconnects, all those capacitance are reduced because of the thick buried oxide. Ability to operate at high temperatures and radiation environment. I am showing even when you talk of a single MOSFET, it is that. Simpler technology, no wells and trenches, shallow junctions easy to fabricate because there is no junction here, it is only at the, there is no junction here, it is only here. That is what makes this capacitance uh, also less. Then better dielectric isolation, the devices are isolated, P channel and N channel MOSFETs are isolated, that is dielectric, not P N junction isolation. If you go to the yes, bulk thing, it is a P N junction isolation, okay? N well and P well things. In both vertical and so the isolation is both in the vertical direction, substrate is isolated, and in the lateral di horizontal direction. Latch of free CMOS, we discussed that. Low voltage operation. I did not, we will understand that when we go into the analysis of this device. That is, you can, if you if you need low voltage operation, low supply voltage you need to have low threshold voltage. You will be able to go for low threshold voltage if the sub, sub threshold slope is ideal 50 millivolts per decade. You can never get that in the bulk MOSFET, which will be 70, 80 or 90. Here you can go right up to 60, 63 millivolts and that of that order in the SOI. You cannot get 60, maybe 63. So, very close to that. That is why you can go to low supply voltages. And that means, low power devices, when you want to go for low power uh, integrated circuits, invariably we will go in for the SOI type of approach. Ideal sub threshold slope 50 millivolts per decade. Okay? Now, that we will just continue with few things now on this. That is the summary of, summary of what we have discussed now so far. Now, what are the, what are the, what is the structure of SOI MOS, MOSFET? Let us quickly see that since there is some few minutes are there, we can discuss that, we can take on from their next uh, lecture. So, substrate I showed it thin, but it is thick one, buried oxide, n channel device, gate oxide, gate. Notice, there are, the structure is different from the conventional bulk MOSFET. I can have gate on the top, I can have gate on the bottom because there is oxide here, but you will say this oxide can be made thick thin and have good control on that. I can make this also thin, but you may lose some of the advantages that you have in the uh, isolation, but we will see that can be overcome by appropriately choosing the structure called fin fat. You can still have thick parid oxide, but you can have both top and bottom, it will, be, it will be on the bottom it will be coming on the sides. If I have a SOI layer like that, now you are talking of gate from here, gate from here. I have the SOI layer like that, I can have the gate like that and I can have thick oxide below. So, gate from this side, this side, this side, all around, wrapped around, that type of structure you can get. To understand that, before you understand, we will just, so you still can have the thick buried oxide, get that type of structure. What we are pointing out is, you can have more than one gate or wrapped around gate you can have in the case of this type of thing. That is really not conventional structure. Now, you can have symmetrical means, if I have two gates, symmetrical means was the work function of G 1 and G 2 are same, the thickness of this oxide and this oxide are same, that is symmetrical. Dimensions here and here are the same thing, that is symmetrical. If any one of them are not same, 
we can call non symmetrical. But now notice one thing if the if I do not talk of anything else I use this as this layer is thick enough I can have the MOSFET structure with the inversion on the top I can have the MOSFET structure by applying this bottom gate inversion at the bottom. So, with the same channel length I will have double the current current from this top gate current from the back gate. Okay. But you will be wondering what is the use of that, but if I have a gate like this I have wrapped around gate this thing is equivalent to top gate this is bottom gate this may be thin thickness will be that whatever you have got there. So, you can have current much more than that and you can keep on reducing the thickness the entire layer is inverted. See the in inversion layer we take it as a, as a charge sheet actually there is a charge from the surface going down below. Similarly, if this gate is inverted there is a charge extending into the bulk if the thickness is very small the entire layer will be inverted that is called volume inversion you can have that type of thing. Okay. There are terrible or terrific advantages tremendous advantages of volume inversion. Okay. We will see that you can get mobilities which are very close to ideal value undoped case features again make the whole thing undoped that also you will see how it is. See if I have two gates here the two gates are competing to have control on the channel. Okay. So, the gate the drain is prevented from having control on the channel to a lesser extent because these two are there from both sides coming. So, the short channel effects are definitely reduced here qualitatively. Okay. You can have if that is the thing you can have undoped ultra thin body MOSFETs also those are the different types you have got. Today people talk of undoped layers here we will have uh, very interesting features which we will be discussing. Now you will have you will have fully depleted or partially depleted MOSFETs. Okay. See if you go to bulk MOSFET what happens the thick layer is there only the top gate there is inversion part of it is depleted rest is bulk. Here pa part of this layer will be depleted from the front gate part of the layer will be depleted from the back gate if the both the depletion layer meeting together that is fully depleted. If the they do not meet together it is partially depleted. So, you can have uh, fully depleted or partially depleted partially depleted you will see that operation is same as the bulk MOSFET. Okay. Why? Pa middle region is not depleted only so you have the entire theory that you discuss for the bulk MOSFET top gate you can discuss and the bottom gate you can discuss add the two there is no need of new theory, but if it is fully depleted the entire theory will be different. Okay you have to go into the modified discussions on this uh, particular type of device. I think I will get back to those full details of this SOA MOSFET operation theory involved etcetera in the next lecture. So, we have uh, uh, gone through the many advantages that this SOA type of device is there and how to achieve that what are the characteristics of the, devi the devices we will discuss in the next one or two lectures.